So this is a video now you can vacuum seal just about anything at home in your own kitchen repeatedly you can reseal stuff without using any plastic at all using the same food saver that most people would use for sealing things in plastic. Um, the plastic stuff's expensive, it's a product you've got to buy. It's not that great if you've got anything spiky it's going to pierce holes in it and it's not great. And the minute you open it all that plastic goes in the bin. It's completely unnecessary. Now I'm about to open a new packet of coriander seed. That is 500 gram, half a kilo of coriander. We like curry quite often but that's going to last a really long time and nothing gets fresher as it goes along. So this is a standard um, jar that you get in most supermarkets. It's one of the ones that's got the little plinky bit in the lid. Yeah, so it can be resealed. That's what you're looking for. Um, it's been washed and dried. You don't have to be fussy about the outside, but you know, this is our label removed. So I'm going to put a load in that. Fill that up, and then I've got another one. Again, same beetroot jar. I mean, there's, there's loads of jars that have got them lids. The only thing you've got to worry about is the size of it. I'll show you that in a minute. So that is, yeah. The amount that's left in there, we'll go through that before it gets a chance to go stale. But this stuff. We're going to seal so that it lasts indefinitely. So we're going to squeeze that down completely so it's ready to go. You get this with it as an accessory. That goes into the accessory port. Now the only other thing you need, you can get things like this as attachments for like um, you know mason jars, the, the kind that they use for canning. That's great but again you've got to buy special jars for that. You can get one of these. These are meant to be for vacuum sealing, like biscuits and stuff, straight in the can. Which you can do, it probably works. And if you were to get, you know, 50 of them lined up along the shelf, you'd have a lot of storage. But they're not cheap. So the other thing you can do, any jar that will fit inside it, there's a nice, make sure it's on properly, connect that up. Right. And then we hit. Button. And that's done. So we disconnect that from there. Now I'm going to press the release button now, which normally, like, that can't come off. That's wedged on there. As I release that, push the release button so that you can get the lid off, air goes in, and the air pressure between the jar and the outside of this canister rushing in forces the lid down. And because at the moment everything inside this the whole canister and inside the jar is virtually out of vacuum the minute we let air into the outside bit it won't go to the inside of the jar because the print temperature sorry the pressure differential will seal the lid tight on so listen just made a tiny little plink noise so I know that's worked and now that is a hermetically sealed jar of coriander seed. That will last indefinitely. If I wanted a really good time, I could store it in the freezer, but it's it's not necessary. That's good for years. And yeah, the only limit is you can fit it in there. So I mean, you can buy these all sorts of places uh, online. And any jar, I mean, you can keep anything in it. People can store chocolate in it for years, apparently. Who stores chocolate for years? Uh, but you know that's good to know you can take something like that that generally goes off quite quick uh, chocolate hasn't got the best shelf life um, but apparently practicing one of these is good for a really long time we use it for herbs and spices because they're not going to go off in a hurry but I mean you could do anything you could do um, you know your lentils your pulses uh, you could do flour if you wanted anything at all that's shelf stable and dry goods basically uh, you can vacuum seal it and you can use these jars over and over you're not generating waste you're saving something from going into the tip um, I mean, yeah, it can get recycled glass, but it's got a massive, massive impact in terms of energy use just to recycle that glass. If you can use it as a jar, that's good. So yeah, that's it. You can, <laughs> you no longer have to recycle jars like this. You can use them indefinitely. And these things, I mean, people tend to buy them because it's a good gimmick, innit? You buy all this stuff from the supermarket, you seal it up and it's good for ages. 
but once they run out of the plastic sealed bags, you know, then it's like, oh, well, this is going to be expensive, I'll keep using it. So people tend to not use them. We picked this up, I think it was about £10 on the local buy and sell on Facebook. Cheap, you know, and that's it. I think that thing, can't remember, it wasn't expensive. Uh, and that's it, we can store things indefinitely. Easy, cheap, environmentally sustainable um, vacuum sealer. One more thing I should say. These are easy ones because they got the plinky lids on, which yeah, has a nice confirmation. But you can use your straightforward jars like that. If it was sealed once, that you know, if it's the kind of jar that will seal, um, you don't need to test it once. Uh, you run it through the machines. When you open it up, it gives a slight hiss when it's opened. That was a vacuum sealed jar. Uh, but obviously, these are the best because. You can tell if the if the um, the seal's gone. And um, one other thing is, if you take one out and it hasn't sealed properly, try it again. And if it still doesn't seal properly, bin the lid. Don't need to worry about the jar. You don't need to wash another one out. Use a different lid from the same kind of jar. Wash that out. Stick it on, and it'll ninety nine percent of the time that'll work. It's not the jar, so you haven't got to keep you know playing around and all the rest of it. I tend to keep them in batches, test a load of them, and then I know I've got like six seven jars that are good on the shelf.